Howdy, Bradley Dillon here for the NewFury.com in my hometown of St. Pete today. Um, here is some friends of mine on the Chimera headlining tour. If that's coming to your area, do yourself a favor and go see all the great bands on the Chimera headlining tour. Um, one of them are my new friends in Fit for an Autopsy. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and what you do in the band? I'm Nate, I'm the vocalist. I'm Pat, I play guitar. First question for you guys. Um, you know, uh, near the end of last year, you released your new album, Hellbound, and uh, I'm not as, personally, I'm not as much into heavy music as I used to be. I feel like maybe I've grown out of it, but it was still one of my favorite straight up heavy releases of the year. Um, what's been the fan reception to that album for you guys? Kind of um, similar to that, really. Yeah. We get a lot of people that were saying, not really a fan of the genre and or like metal music, like as heavy as we were doing it, kind of uh, in general. But they were like, I really like your band. Yeah. Like Ollie, even from like friends of mine that I know don't really listen to this stuff, like went out of way to tell me that it was good and they didn't like our old stuff. Yeah, I find out. I find that we're getting a lot of like websites and like you know like the the lamb goats and things like that, where people are you know generally like kind of attack a band before even giving them a chance. And we've had that from these websites, and then now we're getting a little bit more positive responses from people that are actually a little more supportive, surprisingly. And um, you know, it's it's been good. We've been getting a really great response, and you know, records are selling, and people are coming out to see us play, and you know, it's been good. It's been awesome. So with that with that reception kind of turned around for you guys, um, what do you think that's the result of? Is it a result of your label? Is it a result of just how much you've grown as musicians? What does that? Everything. Mean? Yeah, it's probably all of it. I mean, our record's way different than our last record. I mean, it's still heavy and aggressive, and it's still fit for an autopsy. But at the same time, we uh, we kind of had something to prove on this record, I think. Like, a lot of people were saying that we were in a real death metal band, and that, you know, we were never going to do this, we were never going to do that. And then I just got a bug up my ass and talked to Will about it, and we decided that we would take the next step and make the move to maybe do a little bit more serious things. We got signed to E1. With, and E1 Good Fight Records, hands down, some of the most supportive people that I've ever been involved with in the music industry. I mean, everything all the way down to tour support and taking care of us like a real band, they're thumbs up. So if you can support that label or labels in any kind of way, definitely do it. But um, it's everything. Songwriting, support system, our new management, Crimson Management, Leah, Scott, and Quentin, and that whole team over there are fantastic to us. And um, yeah, all the above, man. You know, it's it's been great. So, one thing I noticed is that um, when you signed to uh, E One slash Good Fight Records um, last year, you've gotten on some pretty big tours. I know. I think it was right after you signed, or something like that. Uh, I think you played at Beyond the Shore and Legion. I think you. That was our headliner. That, when we did a little headliner was. on that, we kind of little little rotating headliner in the beginning with Legion. They did a few headliners in their home area, which was great for us because they you know had a good draw there. And then we headlined that, the rest of that tour. And then after that, we did the Acacia Strain thing. And then, I mean, to be completely honest with you, um, because we both have a lot of longevity in this industry, Nate and myself, and then Will is very in tune with the industry because he's a very important producer and engineer, we have a lot of opportunities that maybe don't come along to other bands in such an early stage. So we got those tours as a combination of what we do and then our friends in the industry plus our, you know, everything else. I would say the label helped that, but those are things that have kind of just worked their way out through relationships. The newer stuff that we're doing now is definitely more because of the label and our booking agency and things like that. So those earlier things, we kind of worked out on our own through the help of our good friends in certain bands. And um, now we're getting a lot more push because the record is doing well. So... I would say that's probably more on the level for your question. It's more now the label than before. You know what I mean? So yeah, because I've noticed that um, like a lot of the post-hardcore and metalcore bands are sell like shit. Of Mice and Men just sold like forty or fifty thousand records in week one, yep. uh, a week or two ago. Um, you feel like uh, heavy music is kind of. Uh, going a little not necessarily mainstream but more popular sure yeah um, I think it's more accessible now I think um, I think people are willing to take a little bit more chance and the truth of the matter is is that you know a lot of people in our genre will say oh you know 
metal's not as metal as it used to be, and there's more bands with singing, and there's more bands with melodic parts, but that's what's making us more accessible, because it's like an entry-level thing. Like, people hear this singy, screamy kind of thing, and it's not quite as much as a band that does what we do, where Nate is so full force all the time. It makes it a little bit easier to ease into the heavier music, and then they discover bands like us. So there's a little bit more of a stepping stone when you have a band that's got a little bit more of a softer approach with their vocals and maybe a little bit less extreme. You know, it's like pop music for little kids. It's the beginning, you know what I mean? And then they eventually branch off into different stuff. So I, f I feel like the post-hardcore and like the, the metal with kind of like the two vocal arrangements kind of things is a good thing for bands like us because it allows people to check out heavier music and not be afraid of it, I guess you could say. Yeah, I, like you said, uh, you've, been, you've been in the industry a lot longer than a lot of your peers have. Um, I'm sure you guys, both of you, have been to some really good shows uh, growing up. What are some of the craziest shows you've ever seen? <laughs> not, not even like the best, just like where crazy stuff happened. You want to jump on this one first? Yeah, I don't even know. Um, <sighs> In my in my younger years, <laughs> it probably would have been uh, seeing Hatebreed, yeah. late '90s in uh, Southern New Hampshire somewhere, and it was with um, Unearth. Unearth was opening the show, and then uh, it was like E Town Concrete, Death Threats, One Enemy, and then Hatebreed headlined. Wow! And it was just bananas. One of the like you know one of the first times I saw like a, a show that ridiculous, like in. Uh, in my area, really, because I've gone to shows otherwise outside in, in like Massachusetts or whatever, but in like my area in New Hampshire, like that was just, yeah, it was crazy. People, oh, people like moshing and running off pool tables and stuff like that. It was just funny. Um, I mean, I guess for me, it just really depends on how you, what you call crazy. Like, I saw Sick of It All Burn and the Cro Mags play at Middlesex County College in like late 80s, early 90s, and like, I mean, I'm 38. So I started going to shows in the late 80s. Um, I've seen, dude, I saw Meshuggah on their first tour in the 90s, and it was like almost a full-scale riot, like completely insane. And I saw, uh, I saw At the Gates at the Wetlands in New York City, which is like a room maybe twice as big as the inside of this. Like I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I can't really talk about too many crazy stories because I might be incriminating myself on certain things. But you know, I've seen a lot of. A lot of nut stuff, like crazy violent shows, and then I've seen like shows that you would expect to be like this violent mess, be like this huge chaotic thing where everybody's smiling and having a great time. And those to me are the <laughs> craziest shows, where like some, shows. some dudes get smashed in the face and just his nose explodes on his face, and then like you see the guy that hit him and him together 40 minutes later standing at the bar having a fucking drink together. That's the kind of shit that I like, man. You know, like, I like rough shows, and I like the violence, but I I like it when it's, like, everybody's doing it and having an awesome time, and there's no bullshit and no fights, you know? Like, we're here to get rough and crazy and get, you know, blow off some steam and enjoy this music because everybody gets angry, but not in a way that's malicious. And that's the good stuff, you know? But it doesn't happen too much anymore. You know, now it's, like, shit gets crazy like that, and it's an insta-fight, you know what I mean? Which is kind of beat, but it comes to territory. We just play right through it, you know, so... But I've seen some stuff. So what do you guys listen to when, uh, you know, you're on a 10, 12, 14 hour uh, road trip? Or, or what do you guys, uh, what do you guys do lately? Trampled by Turtles. Uh, I, I, I listened to, uh, I don't know, probably half the Napalm Death catalog today. Yeah. I recently stuck Rhapsody on my phone. And uh, I just I just listened to pretty much anything I can find on Rhapsody. Yeah. So today was like Napalm Death, but then I also listened to let's see. I'll just I'll just find out what else I was today. I listened to it was a long drive. Sugar today. Yeah. Uh, okay. Little Dio. Um, what else did I listen to? I'm trying to remember. Today's drive was long. What? I got. I listened to some Dredge. Nice. Code nice. Seven. Mm -hmm. Carcass Unleashed. Nice. Dismember. Black Breath, Napalm Death, and that's both as far down my search engine. Unleashed, I forgot about that, yes. man. I always forget about yeah. that. I was, I was going back in the old, like, the old death metal catalog today. That was yeah. really fun. I get, I get weird when I drive, or when I'm, I'm generally a passenger. I fucking hate driving at night. So, um, I, uh, I get, I get strange. Sometimes I listen to, like, Portishead and, like, 
like real relaxed kind of music, and then other times I'm listening to like Mashuga. Steely Dan is always a staple in my phone, like I always have something from them in there. Um, believe it or not, I was weird about the band for a little while, but I recently saw them live, and I've been listening to Periphery again a little bit, checking out some of their stuff, just because that dude Mark is one of my favorite guitar players, and uh, so I've been checking out their stuff a little bit more, but it's a really weird mix. I mean, I could be listening to Michael Jackson, it just uh, depends on my mood. You know, I, I listen to so many different types of music that it's never the same every day, you know. All right, um, last question for you guys. Uh, how is, well, actually, it's second last second, but um, how has this tour with Chimera been for you guys? Uh, have, have a lot of new fans come up to you and been like, wow, I love your set, dudes. Yeah, it's a new crowd for us. Yeah. I mean, Oceano's probably the closest thing to, you know, the, the typical tours we've done. <laughs> And uh, I will you know, probably continue to do, but Camara, like the show's been awesome, and I definitely think uh, their crowd has accepted us pretty, pretty openly so far. Speaking of Chimera, those dudes are fucking rad. They're some of the best dudes we've ever toured with. Yep, Mark, good dude. Like, and I'm not gonna lie, like I heard people be like, oh, you know, it might be tough for you being a young band, being on tour with them, but dude, seriously, fuck all the bullshit, like. Excellent musicians, super nicest dudes ever. Mark has been so helpful with advice and everything for us because, I mean, damn, they've been touring together as a band for 15 years. New members, but still holding it together. So we are pretty lucky to be on this tour with them, and we want to thank Chimera openly in public for you know bringing a band like us on tour and helping us because it means a lot just to have a band of any 15-year-old veteran band you know willing to take a new death metal band out on tour is definitely you know a humbling experience we we were stoked to be here and those dudes are awesome and look into that band and if you used to like them you'll probably like the newer stuff that they're doing because it's really fucking good so definitely